Hello everybody, this is Jerry from BSK Garage. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of setting up the Ford 8.8. So one of the first things I did was I created setup bearings. So I'm just in the process of cleaning the setup bearings and oiling them. The purpose of the setup bearings is to allow the bearings to be taken on and off the pinion in order to get everything set up. So right now what you see is I'm using a pinion depth measuring tool and there's a mathematical calculation that you gotta figure out to get your pinion depth and it kind of gives you a starting point so you put all your shims on and you can see what I mean by setup bearing it just goes in we don't use a crush sleeve at this time we just set the pinion up and we have to measure the bearing preload according to what the specs are for used bearings and that's how it's gonna roll for the setup now this usually takes a few times take it apart Put it together, take it apart, put it together. This is probably one of the most time consuming parts. Always tap your pinion front and back. That rubber mallet kind of get the bearing set. Now I'm just measuring the preload to make sure that I'm somewhat in spec before we try to figure out the carrier shims. Now your carrier hold down brackets should be marked. So that way you don't mix them up because they are machined to each side. You don't want to mix them up. So it's always kind of best to start off with the old shims to kind of see where you're going to be sitting with, kind of get an idea. Now when your carrier bearings are brand new, before you want to start installing it, you just want to give the bearings a quick lube of oil. I'm just going to grab my carrier and I'm going to stick it inside the differential without any shims first. And then I got to try to figure it out. I wish there was a simpler way to try to figure out what your shims are going to be. If someone knows, maybe you could post in the comment below. But I usually always start with the factory shims first. Once I get it in, I try to feed the gear side in first and kind of feel for backlash. And you can kind of get an idea whether you got too much or too little. And now I'm trying to get the other side in. Tap it in. Put your, your carrier brackets back in place to the proper location. I'm just checking the markings. Now I, I like to use an impact driver just to lightly snug them up and then I torque them down to the 80 foot pounds. I believe that's what the spec were for the 8.8 that I was able to Google. This is out of a Ford Explorer, uh, late 90s. Then once again, use the rubber mallet to tap the carrier, kind of help get the bearing set. Rotate it a few times. Now I got my dial set up and I want to measure for backlash. See where I'm sitting at. And my backlash is a little tight, so I need to remove shims from the gear side and put it on the opposite side. So I removed the factory shims and went with the shims from the aftermarket kit because... I had to move shims from one side and move it to the other. Once you have your preload set, you can't just remove shims because then your preload's going to change. So whatever shim you take out of one side has to put on the opposite side to keep the preload. So I removed shims from the gear side, put on the opposite side, just put some gear marking on. And trust me, if you can get this the first few times, consider yourself lucky because this actually takes a long time. It's just not simple science in the least. So my backlash is correct, but my pinion is still a little bit deep. So I still have to make a few more corrections. But once you have all your corrections made and you're happy with everything is set up, you're ready to press the pinion bearing on. So what I did is I got my pinion bearing right there. And I also got my crush sleeve eliminator that I'm going to be installing. I have a video on that. Now, unfortunately, for this part, you need to have some sort of press to press the pinion into the bearing. And you can see I took another bearing race and pushing on the inside so not to damage the actual roller bearings itself. And you want to make sure that it's seated down fully because that will affect it. So, I'm just showing you the crush sleeve eliminator. It basically comes in two parts and has a bunch of shims that you can make it thicker or thinner. And there's a good look at it right there. It's important to know which way the orientation goes. You're going to use one. So I'm just tightening it up. And then 
then you want to measure your preload on it. You want to make sure the preload is right in spec with what you're supposed to be. So now I'm just sticking the carrier back in for the final assembly. Double check everything. Use my brass hammer and tap it in place. Bearing caps are in. Torquing them down. Tap it again with the rubber mallet to help get the bearing seated. Rolling it. Double check my backlash. Backlash is in spec. A little on the loose end, but it's still good. Doing a final look at my pattern. I'm happy with that pattern with the way I got, so I'm going to roll with it. Now, you got to take your bolts back out, put some blue Loctite on them. You can use red if you want, but I'm using blue. And then, once again, once all your bolts are Loctited, you want to torque them down. And I believe the torque I used was 80 foot pounds, but you might want to reference to make sure that's the same with yours. Now, with the pinion seal, what I like to do is take some grease and put grease in where the spring is. That way, when you're tapping it in, there's less of a chance of that spring popping out because if that spring pops out, then that seal's not going to work as it should. I also like to take some assembly grease like I got, put it on the surface that the shaft is going to be sitting. So I'm going to place that right there like so. A couple ways you can do this. I just like to take my brass hammer Alright This red Loctite's like a gel This comes up like a gel There we go Oops, yeah, you want to be careful there. I want to squeeze that down as such. Thread my nut on by hand. So since I have the crush leave eliminator, once it's tight, it's tight. Just as such, because you're not going to you're not gonna go any further in a nutshell I hope that kind of helped you guys out and kind of give you an idea how to set a pinion and carry up it's very quick I didn't go too much in depth because every setup is different and you're probably gonna have to put it together take it apart put it together numerous times before you get happy with the pattern you need to have the pattern and the preload set right otherwise everything is not going to work out as it should hope you guys enjoyed the video if you have any questions or comments post them below and i'll see you in the next one